This is Jeff Majewski of the IBM Corporation, and in this video demo, we're going to be talking about installing the IBM Installation Manager on GOS using SMPE. In the previous demos, we looked at downloading the installation kit and unzipping it and running it. And here, we're going to use SMPE to perform the same install function. We start by looking at the XMIT file downloaded from the beta website for WASV V8. And the first thing to do is convert that from a card image XMIT file into a dump that can be used by DFDSS to restore the rel files for Installation Manager. So we pick a data set name to put the dump file into in a volume and let that run for a minute. And then we restore it using a batch job like that found in the Getting Started Guide. All the instructions for doing this can be found in, found in the Getting Started Guide for the WASV-8 beta. So we run a job to, to restore and unpack the rel files. Go out and look at the volume, and we can see three rel files plus the SMP MCF. Get rid of the dump file because we don't need it anymore. Here are the sample jobs. The first set are for doing the SMP install of the install kit. The second are for setting up the read write installation manager instance. And the third are for using it to install products like Webster Application Source. So we're going to copy all of these into a work data set or rather show you how because I've already copied them previously and customized them. So the demo will go a little bit faster. Now we go to the JCL data set that where we copied the sample files to. The first thing to do is to create the SMP infrastructure, the global zone. And there's the name for the global zone CSI. Of course, the comment, the jobs are fairly well commented. You can set the important things however you like. So we submit that to create the global zone. Next, we create the target and distribution zones. In this set of installs, we're actually showing you installation manager in its own set of target and DLive zones. In an IBM server pack, you would probably install Installation Manager along with the DOS. So we check the Receive job. And again, this is explicitly given in the Getting Started Guide because you'll need it to be a little different from the one shipped in the RHEL file. And then once that's done, we go ahead and allocate the distribution and target data set. We allocate a file system to hold the install kit. And you can choose either the HFS or the CFS job to do this. We've chosen the HFS job. We create the SMPE DD def. Note that you have to point SMP to an existing copy of the JDK so it can find it on JAR command. And there's the location at which the, in, the install kit will be installed, user LTD installation manager C1R4. The same place we showed in the zip, the download and unzip examples earlier. When that's complete, we submit the job to mount that file system at a service mount point, so slash service slash user LTD and so on. And then finally, we're ready to go ahead and do the apply of the install kit with SMP. Issue the check first, which runs very quickly, and then remove the check and run the real apply. I cancel out just to leave these unchanged for later use. When that
that's done, we go ahead and run the accept. And then when that's complete, we see that we have a set of distribution libraries for installation manager, a set of target libraries, one of which SGIN kit is the actual HFS, and the, the normal SMP data set for work. We go ahead and unmount this from its service mount point using a local command. And then remount it where we'll actually be using it, the user LTP installation manager. V1R4. Note that it can be mounted in read-only mode at this point. We don't need to modify it in the process of creating a real installation manager. So looking at what's in it, it consists of a couple of install commands along with a repository that IM uses to install itself and some bootstrap binaries. So now we're ready to run those GIN2 jobs that create the installation manager itself. The installation manager really consists of a read-write copy of those same binaries together with runtime data. And the first thing that we do is create a user ID. In this case, I am admin, but of course you can set it with the permissions that it will, be, that it will need to run. And we set a password for IM admin since the job by default says no password. And we'll need to submit jobs under it or log in. Now we create file systems for the installation manager binaries, the application data, and also a cache for downloaded files. and this job creates those and mounts them. Again, there you have a choice of using either HFS or ZFS. And then finally, we're ready to actually create the installation manager instance. We have to run this under the IAM admin that we created. We can either install it for use by a super user with install C. We can install it for a non-super user, single user, which is what we're going to do with IAM admin. Or you can install it for use by a group of user IDs, which we'll look at in a future demo. For now, we're running under a non-super user, and IAM will always run under that single ID. This runs for a little bit, a minute or two. And complete. At this point, we can either submit commands from the shell as long as we log into IAM admin, or we can submit commands using this skeleton batch job that's provided in the samples library. The simplest command we can send is simply to tell IAM to display its own version. let that initialize its eclipse and run. Then when it's done, we see that it's displayed its version. We know that IAM is 